Stephen Concaran, and welcome to Fencing Ireland's Sandwich, a new limited series where I have the pleasure of sitting down with some of the biggest names in Irish fencing to chat about their international fencing experience. Today, I'm talking with Tim Farrell, who attended the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City and is an active coach at Sal Goblin. Make sure to stay with us to the end of our chat, where I'll ask Finbar about his favourite fencing points. Finbar, thanks for joining us today. Not at all. I'm happy to be here. And, um, I suppose to, to get us started, um, how was it that you first got involved in fencing? Well, like I suppose most people, it was purely accidental. I, um, I, I saw these a sign for fencing stuck on the back of a cash register when I was getting some tennis, uh, tennis balls to play tennis with. And uh, I actually had had um, an accident which uh, incapacitated me from uh, doing much. I used to do horse riding and stuff like that as well, but I couldn't do it because I had uh, muscular problems and in my legs. And uh, I thought then that fencing would be uh, something to do uh, different. Uh, I went down to um, as, uh, what became Sal Dublin or Sal Duffy. Uh, the, the prof actually had only bought it at the time. He was the fencing master and he bought the premises. He, uh, and uh, it was kind of like, oh, October or something like that and uh, he said oh we're closed up and we don't do, we'll come back in September and I talked to him about why I wanted to do it I wanted to do it as a as a, an exercise for my legs and he said oh of course that's exactly what fencing is all about exercising for your legs in fact if I'd said exercise my fingers he would have said exactly that's what it's all about at the time <laughs> but he said legs was great and uh, so that's how I that's how I actually started fencing. But I mean, I I did it purely as a as a footwork exercise. I did footwork exercise for a number of months without doing any blade play. Um, it, it turned out that was the perfect way to actually learn fencing. But nobody in their right mind would start up a sport by just doing running backwards and forwards without actually fencing. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, uh, I uh, eventually the prop said, uh, you know, you, you know, how's your feet and you can do this walking, surely you'll do some of the blade work. And uh, he brought me over, I remember, to two girls who were fencing and uh, he, they fenced away and he read the phrases as, as to what they were doing. And it sounded fantastic. Uh, I subsequently realized they weren't doing that at all, but it did sound really good. <laughs> it sounds like a good salesman, all right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I was very lucky in so far as he was, um, he was of the standard of an international fencing master. Mm. Just the look of the draw that he happened to be so great. He really was a fantastic fencing mass teacher. And uh, any of the, his other pupils will all say exactly the same sort of thing. And so what in particular, you say you were playing other sports, uh, what made it that made fencing stick? It's, it so happened that um, all my family ha were dead. So I was a ward of court and it meant that I had freedom to do whatever I wanted. So it, 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 when, uh, when I, I took up fencing, I suddenly found, uh, as it were, a new family. And um, the, the, uh, I fenced that the, the salle in those days was open five days a week. So I went every day to it. It was my act activity. I gave up the horse, I'd more or less given up the horse riding to an extent. I played a little bit of tennis, but only a small amount. Uh, I, 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 in, in, the, in junior school, I was a very fast runner. I was, I was among the best in the school at running over a short distance. But if you put me at a mile or something, I'd be dead before I got halfway around. I was absolutely no good at, no good at a persistent action uh, over a short distance. The length of a piece, I was fine, but uh, <laughs> anything further was a problem. And, uh, I, was, I really wasn't a team sport player either. I liked to, to, um, 
if I lost, I lost because it was my fault. And if I won, I won because it was my uh, good mm -hmm. luck. So uh, that's, the, that's what, how I, so fencing suited me very well. Yeah. And uh, what stage did you start to look at international fencing? Well, well I, joined, I, I joined, as I say, about 1962. And uh, I did footwork and that sort of thing. I, um, I st started competition uh, about a year later, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, two years later, I fenced in the junior world. Uh, there w it was a time of, um, at that time, there was a whole new uh, breed of fencers. There was a, the older group who were um, fencing away. But then there was a new group consisting of people like John Berger Hayes, Nula Parker, Michael Ryan, uh, who were pup all pupils from the beginning, as it were, from the, of the props. And uh, we fenced uh, a, a much different style to the older people were very restrained and it was very uh, respectful and that sort of thing. You had a, a lot of good fencers, George Carpenter, uh, Harry Tullier, uh, Nick had more or less stopped, uh, but um, th there were a lot of good fencers around. Uh, but uh, we were uh, a, a totally new breed of fencers, and we were all of, a, of an age. Yeah. And so we competed uh, together, more or less, uh, and ag against each other and against the older fencers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had, uh, uh, I, I, like from a very early start, like we, I've, they had, Prof had a, a competition at, at the end of the year uh, of that I'd started and uh, mm -hmm. I won that. Uh, and I just kept on winning and it didn't seem to be a problem. Uh, once you start winning uh, something, well, you, you don't stop. It, it's, it's, uh, it, you, you, you keep going at it because I really hadn't won anything before because I'd never competed in anything before. So, and, and, as I say, the, uh, I won, I forget, some like East of Ireland, those kind of things. And then uh, I went to the Junior World Championships in Rotterdam with uh, Colm O'Brien, who was another of, the, of, of my group, as it were, of fencers of my start time going to fencing internationally as it were was no i didn't see it really as any different from fencing in ireland or fencing uh, in england or wherever it, they were all the same to me my, my view of fencing was uh, you put an opponent up and i'll take him on and I, I i'm kind of disappointed to win but to lose i mean i hated losing yeah uh, but uh, that's really it, it it didn't it didn't make a huge difference from what you said earlier so you started in in, in 62 by 68 you're at the, the mexico games uh, yes how did when did that become a goal for you a quick well, turnaround like I, like I really said that um goals are a new concept uh, i did we didn't have goals we fenced uh, at least from my part you fence everybody, all comers. Uh, if, if I was fencing in the club, it didn't matter to me if it was a beginner or a, a very experienced fencer. I would have as much fun, and it was fun. That was really, for me, fencing was a fun game. Mm -hmm. So that um, it, it, we, we, um, we were fencing in the quadrangular, and I think it was the Irish FA team uh, beat England in the quadrangular. And uh, we put that down as a marker of being better than England, although we lost the quadrangular. Uh, uh, so it was more or less the FA team that went in '68. Uh, that was that was the grounds that they uh, we went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did you find being part of a team when you said you you also like being the having the individual aspect? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> It, it was it was uh, it was a team of friends really we uh, we practiced we did we did uh, practicing a lot before we went i mean we fence uh, we go to the sal 
the prof would organize before breakfast. We we do uh, sort of work out and uh, fencing and that sort of thing, and then we would do it again in the evening. Uh, training for the Olympics was uh, I just uh, it was put on. There was a there's a all the all the uh, club were involved in it. I mean, well, I say we, we would start fencing at kind of like eight o'clock in the morning, we would go down. Uh, the other fencers, the group of fencers of the people in the club would turn up as well and fence with us. And, we'd all, and in the evening as well, they'd turn up to, to help us train. Uh, training, uh, we, we, we uh, we had, we had, uh, we, uh, the prof, uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it was his livelihood fencing. I don't know how he actually survived. As a, as a, in those days, uh, it was purely by giving lessons and joining a club that you survived. Uh, so he, he couldn't afford to come to Mexico with us because the, 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 uh, he would have to pay his own way, as we all paid in those days. Okay. Uh, so we we, hired, we got a coach uh, beforehand before we left, who was a Royal Marine, and he was very much into um, act, uh, getting fit, he had swinging out of ropes and all that sort of thing. Really, wasn't our thing. Uh, we, we were only into, we, we we figure you get fit by fencing, and mm -hmm. uh, so we could fence the whole day long. It was never yeah. a problem to fence. As such, and how did you find the training? Because am, am I right in saying you fenced both FA and Sabre? In in those days, um, we fenced uh, all weapons. Mm -hmm. It was normal by the by by sixty eight. Uh, there there were, as I said, John Boucher and Hayes, myself, Colum, uh, and Michael Ryan, who would compete for um, the all weapons trophy. Mm -hmm. So it, you would expect, you would expect, I was really a foil fencer, that was what my thing, I also loved foil, uh, but uh, you fenced Epe as well and you yeah. fenced Sabre as well, it didn't make any difference, I fenced, mm -hmm. I'm sure my Sabre strongly resembled foil uh, and so did my Epe to an extent, but uh, if you didn't, uh, you would expect to, to win either at a foil FA or Sabre to win one of those and to come in the first, the next, the first, at least the first three in the other two weapons. So, uh, like, it wouldn't be unusual to uh, turn up for a competition to come back with two of the three trophies and the All Weapons trophy. So the, the All Weapons was always competed, so it was organised uh, that uh, you could take part in the three yeah. weapons. Talking specifically then about, say, the Olympics, what stands out in your memory about competing there? Um, well, as I say, really, it was, we, we had, we, we, I went in 65, I went to the World Championships in mm -hmm. Paris. Uh, and for me, the Olympic Games was just another World Championships. It was exactly the same people. You yeah. meet them. Uh, so it, that was no different. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, while there was a team of us there for the for the games uh, in Mexico, and it, we we because of the altitude Mexico was at, we went uh, six for six six weeks uh, to acclimatize. Okay, we were yeah. very happy because our really fit coach went out and trained with the British team the day after he arrived, and he was carried back on a stretcher. So oh, wow. that. That uh, gave us the opinion that uh, hard workouts were not going to be the order of our day. <laughs> yeah, oh, that sounds good. Lots of fencing, yeah. So, yeah, our main goal was to do something in Epe. But uh, I, I, we had an Epe team, but uh, uh, for the fenced. I fenced foil. I fenced I saber. I wasn't going to, well. He wasn't great at saber. It was, it, of the three weapons, saber was my third, and it's really not the place to enter with your third best weapon in the Olympic Games. But uh, uh, we, 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 because of the camaraderie of the group, 
-hmm. we uh, we enjoyed the, the trip uh, but like you, you when you went and fenced we all fenced uh, say at the same roughly the same time so you were on your own in a in a piece on a piece in a room which somebody else we might might be in any other member of the team around at the time or if they were they could be quite a distance away so you couldn't actually support each other mm -hmm. so so to that extent the games the fencing in the games was no different from the other things i remember the, the first uh, the first uh, fight i went out on because we had to kit out ourselves as well uh, i was fencing against a chap from uh, venezuela i think it was anyway he uh, it was he went he, uh, he went through my absolutely brand new electric jacket which really um, annoyed me because uh, not, not so much that he had nearly injured me as it was the fact that he'd put a hole in the jacket and I had to <laughs> put another one. And that was really a good start to the games. Yeah. I've had my, my share of experiences of broken hearted when weapons check issues and stuff. Yeah, no, that's... Yes, yeah. Well, I, because when I started fencing, it, uh, Sabre was obviously a manual, no electric in that. And the, the foil too, in the junior competitions and that, that was a uh, manual foil. Uh, electric was, uh, it was very difficult to get uh, practicing with electrical equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, so for most of the practicing in the, those early 60s, we did, uh, we did it with, with um, uh, ma manual foils. Uh, I was a technician, so uh, I built the fencing boxes, so we could uh, we have have uh, a fence on a on a on, with electric gear all the time. We put, put down uh, eight elect eight pieces in the in the cell and uh, fenced on that. So it meant you could fence continuously, yeah. uh, thing, which made training and that sort of thing was uh, very good. Mm. And, and thinking then beyond just just the games, um, what would be what stands out in your memory? Maybe as being one of your biggest results. For me, the most outstanding period or whatever action fencing competition really was the very first one I won. Okay. So that, and after that, it was just a repeat of that. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, to try, to actually win something and get a cup or whatever. We also got egg cups and those things like that. And uh, you, to win one of those was great, and you were happy, and then you were unhappy the next day because you didn't win, and uh, you wanted to win again. So that was, that was really what it was. It was about winning uh, yeah. the, the thing. Now, um, it, you would be highly disappointed with yourself for not winning. Um, it would be, in, that, in those times, it would be one of your club members that was uh, won instead, and uh, maybe you you get second or third out of it. Yeah, that was okay. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, it's it's actually really good to hear that your first one meant so much because it is something that sticks out in your memory is when you finally make it over the line. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, were there any kind of particular points that you love to score yourself in in any of the weapons? Uh, because I had uh, practiced a lot of footwork, mm -hmm. I was actually very fast in and out of, of the thing. And um, like uh, blade work uh, came afterwards. I, I, um, I suppose uh, my defense was always very good and taking the blade was one of my strongest uh, things. I could take the blade uh, and it was really taking the blade but the reuse of your fingers uh, in, in so doing. Um, in those days, the blades tended to be held out in, in front of your opponent. So taking the blade was quite easy to find. Okay. And, uh, it communicated an awful lot to you. You, you took, once you took the blade, it was like shaking hands with your opponent. You got, you knew exactly whether they were confident or nervous or strong or hesitant. It all communicated through the blade. Uh, nowadays, 
And nobody fences like that because you give away too far, far too much information through the blade. So they people keep their blade fairly well out of the way. Um, the uh, my, my uh, interest really was always uh, to study my opponent uh, and to decide what they how they reacted to a certain initiative. Mm. And to use that immediately against them. That was uh, that was my whole mantra always in fencing. Mm -hmm. Find what they do. Uh, if they react to anything, uh, you, you're you're looking for base instincts, really. Something that they instinctively do when they are put under any sort of pressure. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a favorite sort of move that they do. They rely on and. Uh, that's what you're looking for. Why, what, what is that move? And then you don't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, um, you don't allow them to control the thing. That the um, the the piece is yours. I remember fencing against uh, George Carpenter, who was very good epicist, uh, Olympic class uh, in his in his day, and I fenced against him and. Uh, I was take, I, my thing, of course, was take his blade and hit him. I took his blade, I, I stepped in because I was kind of more foil than Epe. But mm -hmm. uh, when I did that, the referee called halt and uh, the fight stopped. So my taking the blade and hit him didn't work. Okay. And there, uh, let's say there was a bit of friction over the uh, calling of the halt when I, when I was doing my thing. And I lost the next competition I went in and I fenced him and uh, I had decided none of this hanging around doing the stuff. And I think it took, it took at least 20 seconds to win the fight. Just go straight in, bang, hit out, <laughs> don't, don't forget the technique and all that sort of thing. Just use your natural fencing instinct. Yeah. Uh, um, it, 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 uh, speed was where I was at. Now, fencers, I think, are faster now than I was in the 60s, but I was a lot faster than the fencers who were in from the 50s. <laughs> well, I think that's a pretty good way of, of showing just how everything progresses. It's not just point after point or bout after bout. It's the following day and the following week when you're going up against similar opponents. Uh, I think that's quite a well, good well, way. When, when I, whenever I mm -hmm. went to a competition and I came back, uh, the prof didn't ask me really too much about uh, how I did in it. What he asked me is what I learned from it. Mm. And that, that is really most important, that you come back with having learned something. I'd have to come back with a move that I hadn't considered or whatever to, to, to show him and he'd have to demonstrate it and he'd kind of say, well, okay, you can yeah. have a look at that. No, that, that's really, really good. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much, Fimar, for taking the time to join us today. It's been great chatting to you about your life in fencing. Um, I'd also like to say a special thank you to Colin Flynn for research and editing and to Derva Foley for her instrumental help in creating this series. Thanks, too, to all of our viewers. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe to Fencing Ireland. Don't forget, you can also find Fencing Ireland on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or at fencingireland.net. Goodbye. Thank you.